This month is Black History Month, and here at Fox 54, we are honoring the incredible black activists, abolitionists, and leaders who have shaped history. Mo Carter joins us with the story of a person some would say is an unlikely hero in the civil rights movement. Mo. You're absolutely right, Julia. When we learn about the civil rights movement, it's easy to pinpoint some of the key figures from that area, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., John Lewis, A. Philip Randolph, and Fannie Lou Hamer. Of course, it's easy to identify those individuals because they look like me. But uh, there were also many brave non-African Americans who fought against racial inequality during that time. Recently, I had an opportunity to speak with one of them. Mrs. Jones from Power Mahalan is a lifelong activist with a hand in some of the most influential moments of the 1960s civil rights movement. Born in Washington, D.C. and raised in Virginia, Mahalan grew up in a Christian family that was very active in the church. Having a strong Christian background allowed Ms. Mahalan to understand that not all was right with the world, including the racial climate. Was there a specific moment that pushed you to get involved? The moment that I knew I was going to take action came when I was about 10 visiting Grandma in the old company logging town of Oconee, Georgia. And my girlfriend and I went sneaking off into the colored, that was the polite term. It was creepy, the way folks just disappeared when they saw these two little white girls coming. But then we got to the school it was a one-room shack, never had any paint on it, no glass or screens in the windows, just wooden shutters, no playground equipment, no running water, no electricity. It was not fair. Out the other end of town was a brand new brick school for the white kids, fanciest building for miles around. And I knew this was not doing what we learned in Sunday school about treating people the way we wanted to be treated. And that eventually I would do something to help make things better for everybody. Seeking to do her part to help integration across America, Ms. Mahalan attended Tougaloo College in HBCU in Jackson, Mississippi. Ms. Mahalan, can you tell us more on your part to help integrate and your experience at Tougaloo? I knew that integration, if it was real, should be a two-way street. And maybe I'd go and apply to some colored college. Well, I talked my idea over with my friends and the leadership of the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And they thought it was a good idea. And someone said, well, if you're going to do it, you just may as well go to Mississippi, because those students haven't done anything yet, like sit in. So I applied to Tougaloo and was accepted, even though my high school back in Virginia just very pointedly refused to send my transcripts. Prior to her arrival at Tougaloo College, Mahalan, along with activists like Stokely Carmichael, boarded buses and trains and traveled to the South to challenge segregation on interstate travel despite it being unconstitutional. These brave souls became known as the Freedom Riders. Mahalan and many others were arrested and put on death row in one of the South's most notorious prisons for breaching the peace. I went on the Freedom Ride to Mississippi, spent the summer in jail on death row at Parchman, and got out just in time to go enroll at campus. I was, I heard the first white student. There was some feeling that, well, maybe I wouldn't have to study as hard as they did because I had gone to white schools and Duke University. As Camille said, when I saw you studying just as hard in the library every night as the rest of us, I knew you were okay. During her time at Tougaloo, Miss Mahalan became the first white member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Can you let us know what led you to join? Well, the sororities and fraternities were sort of the social basis on campus, and most of my roommates, just by luck of the draw, ended up being Deltas. And there wasn't much difference between a civil rights meeting and a sorority meeting. 
Now notorious image, Mahalan sat behind John Salter and Ann Moody at the whites only counter at Woolworth's diner as violence began to break out. The trio is shown being ruthlessly harassed and assaulted by a swelling crowd of young white men, a moment that sparked Dr. King's 1963 march on Washington. It was an awful lot of anti-black feeling sort of across the board amongst whites. And it was only an issue of black and white. Then it wasn't a question of Hispanics not speaking English and Muslims not being Christians. It was based strictly on skin color. When you look back, what are you most proud of as a result of your decisions to make a difference? That I went ahead and did what I thought was right. Of course, I'm proud that we did get segregation outlawed. Um, I just wish we could have taken care of all the racism that was behind it. Now at the age of 80, Ms. Mahalan still gets around and does speaking engagements across the country, encouraging everyone to make a difference. To find out more about Ms. Mahalan and other greats that we will honor during Black History Month, just head over to our website, fox54.com.